I like Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> um, I met her. I like painting and drawing and Instagramming. <laughs> You don't get it all, the enormity of the job. I mean, you're responsible for 400 kids and 50, 60 staff members. And I was walking to class and my heart started racing in the hallway. And I walked into class and I got dizzy and I saw spots everywhere. And then I fell, and then everything just went black. What I walked into was, she just looked almost like a sleep, just like a very odd color, you know, like a very gray, odd color. There was a teacher in there, Mr. White, and he was taking her pulse on her neck. He just said she doesn't have a heartbeat because I had taken CPR training so many times. Like it was just automatic. School called me at 9.07 a.m. and said that I needed to get there because Ella wasn't well. And I said, what? She's fine. I just dropped her off. The response was, Teresa, they're doing CPR on Ella. She just started crying. She just cried. And like, it was like that minute you wait for your baby to cry. Like, she just started crying. I heard shortly after Ella's event that the likelihood of surviving a sudden cardiac arrest in a school with no automatic external defibrillators is around 3%. Numerous tests were performed and all pointed to the diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is when a wall of your heart is thicker than it should be and it was making it hard for my body to let blood flow through my heart and they were going to implant a defibrillator and pacemaker and it was Two and one. Hi, Grandma. I'm in my hospital. Love you. Bye. Wait, I'm just going to tell us. I'm going to be all right. You're all right. Yeah. I was scared. What if something happens? And in movies, it's like when people get surgeries, they die. And that went through my mind. So it's hard. Even with this, you got to learn how to live with it. In April of 2013, we learned that Ella's defibrillator worked as it was supposed to. I mean, it was the same thing. It was like this call again. But this time they were saying on the radio, it's Ella. So it was like a million times worse because, you know, by then she's just way special to me. And I'm thinking, oh, this can't be happening to her again. But she, when I got there this time, she was already sitting up because apparently the device had shocked her. It's just such an amazing technology because who knows if that wasn't there, you know, would it have been possible to have the same outcome again? I love her. I'm thankful. Um, what if she hadn't been taught CPR, right? <laughs> wouldn't be here. Oh, that's a forever bond now. She's an amazing kid and I will go to her wedding and I will see her graduate. There aren't words sufficient to describe the gratitude my husband and I feel for Deb for saving Ella's life, for the steady hands of Dr. Earl Austin that placed Ella's device, and for the continued care that Ella receives from Dr. Whit Boone, Dr. Chris Johnsrud, Barbara Russell, and Dr. Jeff Tobin and his team. But above all, we're grateful to the American Heart Association for funding the urgently needed education and research that is saving lives like our daughters. We all have to contribute to something that's this important, right? It could be you, it could be your family member, it could be you coming across someone that needs help. And if we don't support the American Heart Association, 
if we don't put dollars in action. You know, it, it, it could happen to anyone. It's critical. It doesn't only just fund research, it also saves children and people under life-threatening situations. Well, you can't take life for granted. You, you only live once. <laughs> I feel like I got two opportunities. <laughs>